What's up? For those of you that don't know me, my name is Shane Farmer. I'm the founder of Dark Horse Rowing, and this is our Garage Gym Beginner's Guide to Rowing. This is going to be a 30 minute workout, so it is meant for you to follow along. If you have been looking for a place where you can simply put a video up, sit down on your rower, and follow along to learn how to use the rower as a training tool, this is the video for you. That is literally what we are going to do. Go ahead and get your machine set, hit pause, and then come back and let's get rolling on this. It's a 30 minute workout, that's it. 30 minutes and you will be done learning how to use the machine. From there you can revisit this video as many times as you want and in the future we'll release more videos for you to follow along with to get faster, better, and stronger and healthier on the rower. Before we begin, before we even sit down on the machine, the things that we need to contemplate and think about are getting our bodies primed for the movement. We call it greasing the groove, getting your body ready to move on the rower, getting it ready to articulate and to be able to move the way it's supposed to move. So we're gonna go through a few floor warm-up exercises here to get you ready. Go ahead and find some floor space and let's get going. Exercise number one is going to be a hamstring loosener. We're gonna get those hamstring nice and primed and ready for you to move, for you to be able to move the hips because you are gonna be tensioning those hamstrings every single stroke. I call this the sumo squat progression. It is going to get you nice and open, get your trunk open, get your thoracic spine moving, but also and primarily warming up your legs and your hamstrings. Let's go ahead and follow along. Good, now first and foremost, you are going to stand with your feet at shoulder width. You're gonna take your arms and you're gonna reach overhead. You're then going to push your hips back, reaching down, 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 down. Grab your toes and you're going to drop your hips. Okay, from here you are going to keep your hands pulling up on your toes. Your elbows are going to be inside your knees. So you're lifting your chest and pulling on your toes. And I'm gonna have you do five of these. So you're gonna keep the hands on the toes the whole time. Lift your hips, feel the pull in the hamstrings. Drop the hips back down. Lift, drop, lift, and drop. Good. Now from here, you're gonna keep pulling up on your toes. You're gonna to take one arm and reach up to the ceiling and back down. Grab your toe again, take the other arm, reach and lift up to the ceiling. Notice I'm pulling up on this toe the whole time. I'm not bending that elbow. So keep that elbow long and reach up to the ceiling. I'm gonna have you do that 10 times per side, alternating, reach, reach. Finally, you're gonna sit in the bottom, lift your arms and stand tall. Very good, that is your sumo squat progression. Next, you are going to go to an inchworm. An inchworm is again, going to help with the hamstrings. From here, you're going to place your hands on the floor, trying to keep those knees straight. If you have to bend the knees, that's okay. From here, you're going to walk your hands out, and then you will walk your toes to your hands. Then you'll back it up and reverse it. Walk your legs back, and walk your hands to your feet. Good, you're going to do that 10 times. Now from there, we are going to start practicing the actual movement of moving through our hips, okay? And not our spine. So what I want you to do is find a wall. You're gonna stand up against that wall and you're gonna step away slightly, maybe a, a foot length away from the wall. You're gonna take your hands and reach up. Now you're going to push your butt back, 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 back until it touches the wall. And that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna do that 20 times for me. If you can touch it easily, then you're gonna take a little bit, a little bit of a step forward. Hands back up, reach, 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 reach. Butt touches the wall, squeeze your butt and stand. Reach, reach, squeeze your butt and stand. You're gonna give me 20 of those. What you're practicing is how do you move your hips without rounding your spine. That's extremely important for you to understand when we are on the machine. So give me 20 of those and then go jump on your rower and we're gonna jump into the actual skill and workout component. So we're gonna start with the catch position. We're gonna set ourselves with good positions so that you understand what it's supposed to feel like. And then we're gonna move into drills that we call pause drills and that will help you work on the sequence of events or the order of operations. So let's grab the handle. On the handle, hands are gonna be nice and wide. You're going to 
use a nice loose grip. I don't want to want I don't want to be relaxed, but I like you to think about closing the circuit between your thumb and your forefinger. Don't overlap them. If that handle is sitting in the palm of your hand, you're probably gripping a little bit too tight. If it's only in your fingertips, then you're probably holding a little too loose. So just find that nice happy medium. So you're going to grab that handle, reach the arms and the shoulders so that shoulders going to reach, head and neck relaxed. Then you're going to take your arms and roll them down. All right, so those shoulders are going to roll down and that's going to tighten this lat here. You should feel that get tight as you do that. Next, my back is nice and flat, similar to how we practice in the warm up. I don't want to be sitting on my tailbone and I don't want my spine rounded. I want to be sitting on my butt, kind of nice and nice and tall, if you will. Next, you're going to notice that my hips are behind my shoulders. If at any point your shoulders are stacked on top of your hips, something is wrong. Okay? You should never have them stacked here. You're only going to ever pass through that position, but for the most part in the catch, hips are behind the shoulders. Next, I want those knees tracking underneath my arms and my heels are going to be down. Now in rowing, we do allow the heels to lift over time. However, as you're learning, you're going to find it's far more effective to keep your heels down and learn how to use your whole foot to press than by pushing through the toes, which develops bad habits. You can get there eventually with intention, but we're not going to do that from the start. So getting back into that catch position, now the final piece and the fun part is sliding the whole system in without springing an energy leak. And an energy leak would be knees splaying out, posture rounding, right? Giving up any of those positions, that would be an energy leak. So we're going to set those positions and then you are going to get yourself into the catch. Now I'm going to set my timer here and we are going to run six minutes of pause drills. So that's three minutes of each drill. The first pause drill is going to be a pause at the release, arms away. Now what we are doing here is giving you the opportunity to practice just one segment of the stroke. So in this instance, we're going to practice the catch and the drive into the release. That's why I'm holding these hands away. So join me as you, as I've been doing this, you should be following along. Come back to the catch with me. Good. When I say go, we're going to drive and release the handle nice and smooth. Make sure you don't hit yourself with that handle. So let's come back to the catch, reset, find good position, follow along, go. Good. Let's reset. Find a good catch, go. Let's take a second, make sure your knees are flat or extended. Make sure that your chest is open to 11 o'clock, not overextended. Also not sitting up at 12, so open at 11. Elbows extended, shoulders and lats tight. Reset. Go. Reset. Make sure you get comfortable releasing that handle. Go. Make it nice and smooth and fluid. You're not trying to cling on to that handle for dear life. You're just practicing pushing the machine away. So reset, push the machine away with the legs on this one. Go. Good, let's practice that push again on this one. Reset. Go. Very good. Reset. Go. Very nice. Now when you go to push on this next one, I want you to think about bracing through your trunk. Reset. Good. We have one minute left. Go. Reset. Okay. Brace that trunk nice and tight. Think about pulling your belly button through to your spine. Ready? Go. Reset. On this one, when we hit the release, make sure you're not pulling on the straps with your toes. I want you to think about pressing the ball of your foot into the foot stretcher. Go. Good. Reset. Go. Reset. Go. Very nice. Go ahead and relax for a second. So next, we are going to move on to focusing on the recovery. Now the recovery is really 
the phase of the stroke where we can't do any work to the machine, so we're going to try and relax as much as possible. And it's also used as a way to reorganize our body so that we can get into good position, which would be the catch, right? It's all about getting back to a good catch. So on this one, we're going to start at the release, but this time we're going to we're going to stop the pause at the catch, so instead, we're only pausing at the release. So when I say go, the focus is going to be on correct order of operations through the recovery, catch, drive, pause at the release, go, focusing on that recovery. This is a big one to follow along with. Don't get ahead of me here. You'll notice that I'm going to really take my time organizing my positions through the recovery, so that when I get to the catch, I can drive and push the machine away. We'll have two minutes of this. So come join me at the release, arms are away. When I say go, we're going to start that recovery. It's going to start with the close of the hips and then it's going to start and then it's going to move on to a bend of the knees. Remember that close of the hips is what we practiced on the wall. Go. Catching and driving, releasing and pausing again. Go. Notice I'm still not clinging to the handle, and I'm also not rushing forward. Go. Very nice. Stay in rhythm with me. Go. Smooth slide up, turn around, change directions by pushing through the feet, not pulling with the arms or leading with the shoulders. Go. Go. Let's just settle into a rhythm here for a few strokes. Go. 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 Following along with me. Go, 30 more seconds. Go. Go. Nice and smooth through the recovery. Being braced when you get to the catch. Go. Nice tight midline, nice tight lats when I get to the catch. Go. And this will be our last stroke. Good, go ahead and set that handle down. Unstrap, go ahead and grab a little bit of water. Take a second to relax. We're gonna come back and hit that workout. All right, let's get into our workout. What it's gonna be is 20 minutes of continuous rowing, broken into four five minute segments, and each five minute segment is going to be assigned a specific stroke rate, which I'm going to set for you, and you are just going to follow along. So at this point, Make sure you have the video on a laptop or your phone sitting on top of your monitor or on your TV on your wall, wherever you want it. Just have it playing so that you can watch and follow at the same time. The sole objective here is to match my stroke rate and the same ratio I have. That would be drive to recovery. That ratio, make sure you're matching with me every step of the way. And if you're having trouble connecting on stroke rate, just remember as long as we catch at the same time, we will stay on stroke rate together. So I'm going to walk you through how to set this up on our monitor and then we're just gonna kick right off into it and we're gonna have a great little 20 minute workout. So turn the monitor on, doesn't matter what model you are using, you're just gonna turn it on. You'll go to select workout, new workout, single time. You're going to hit the minus button once and that should change it to 20 minutes. You will then hit the right arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six times, and you will hit the plus button once. What you'll notice is that we just changed the split length to five minutes, and that is the amount of time that we are going to have at each stroke rate. The stroke ratings we're going to use will be 16, 18, 20, 22, and we're gonna hold it for each five minute segment. It's really good practice to be able to just settle in at a stroke rate and learn how to pace or how to, how to set rhythm on the machine. So now that we have 20 minutes and five minutes, you can hit that check mark. We're gonna be ready to go here. We're gonna strap in and get going. So um, 
All you need to focus on right now is just matching what I'm doing and feel. Feel what we're doing so that you can intrinsically connect to what your body is doing with what you are seeing. All right, let's get into it, guys.
are you listening? Damn.
Whoa. I don't know about you, but I'm sweaty. So, guys, if you enjoyed that, please, A, leave a comment below, because I want to hear it. I want to know what you liked, what you didn't, so we can make more of these in the future. And B, if you enjoyed that 20 minutes, give yourself five minute rest, go back and just redo it again. That's 40 minutes like that that you knocked out. So watch that video, follow right along. That's all you gotta do. Um, guys, thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this workout. This is Dark Horse Rowing. Make sure you click subscribe so that every time we come out with a new video, you guys get alerted right away so that you can see when new workouts come up ready for you. Guys, we'll see you on the other side. Guys, thanks for tuning in. This has been a 30 minute workout, your beginner's guide. If you've never rowed before, this is what you need to be doing to the rowing machine. How do you learn how to use this machine? It takes strokes and you gotta take good strokes. You can't just take any strokes. So thank you for joining us. Make sure that you guys subscribe to our page so that the next workout that comes out, you get alerted and you can follow right along wherever you may be. Don't forget, you can take this, put it on your phone, Put your phone on your monitor, you can project it on your wall, you can put it on your laptop and set your laptop next to you. These are meant to be guidance for you and to give you an opportunity to learn, to get better, and to have some fun, all while having a training partner. You and I, maybe I'll bring in some guests. We'll see, let me know how you like it in the comments below. Let me know how this workout went for you, what your thoughts were, what you'd like to see more of in the future. Guys, we will see you on the other side. Thanks so much for joining us.